everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mayara, I am a brand and web designer and here we talk all things design, freelancing, productivity, creativity, all that stuff. If you are new here and these are things that interest you, please consider subscribing to the channel, I promise you will not be disappointed. And today we're going to talk about the only three things a new freelance designer truly needs to kickstart their career. I see so many people thinking that they need things that while they are nice to have, they are not mandatory and if you don't have them, it's not the end of the world and they're not gonna stop you from growing. I started to notice this common pattern among new designers, like they think they have to start by creating content on Instagram and that thought doesn't make them all that comfortable. Or they think they need a really powerful setup or very small things like having a professional email account that they cannot afford right now, so they let those things hold them back. And in a way, that's just imposter syndrome. Talking is just your own like insecurities and lack of confidence in your skills and just the fear of negative feedback. But guess what? It doesn't matter when you start, that's always going to be there. You're gonna have to fight through it. It really helps to remember that people you admire were once in this position. You cannot start at an advanced level, you have to be a beginner at first. So we're gonna talk about these three things, but I want to sum it up and say that all you really need is a little bit of motivation and these three essentials. A portfolio slash your own website, a social media presence, and you don't have to be like creating TikToks and, and Reels, we're gonna talk about that in a second. <laughs> and third, a willingness to learn. So if you're starting your freelance journey and you're not sure if you're ready, I really hope this video will help you. Number one is obviously a portfolio. This is something that new designers really stress about because you need a portfolio to have clients, but how are you gonna put together a portfolio if you don't have clients? And I promise it's easier than you think and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect from the get-go. It just needs to showcase your abilities and your style and be organized. If you haven't worked with a client yet, I recommend you do mock projects. You can go to websites like goodbrief.io and generate a design brief and work on it as if it were a client project. Or you can take part in design challenges. So there are a bunch of design challenges. I know Abby Connick, one of my favorite brand designers, she has the coolest branding challenges. So if you're into branding, go check her out. Practicing is so important because it's how you get better, it's how you get comfortable, it's how you find your style and how you have those first few projects to add to your portfolio. And I do recommend you mention these are not real projects, just so future clients are aware, but that doesn't take away the credit from your hard work. And remember not to stuff your portfolio with random projects. Try to have maybe five high quality pieces there in industries that you really want to work for. You can use websites like Adobe Portfolio, Wix, Squarespace, ReadyMag, like there are so many options out there where you can create your own portfolio. But what I do recommend is that you get a domain just so it looks more professional. Now social media presence. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this and I'm not saying that my truth is the absolute truth, but I do think it's important to, you know, be present on one or two platforms just to build connections, to network with other designers and to engage with potential clients. I started creating content a year and a half ago and I saw how much I improved thanks to it in a way. First, because it was a creative outlet, you know, I was designing for myself, for my own taste. So that really helped me find my style and figure out who I wanted to work with. I also met incredible people, people that I'm truly good friends with and also got inspired to do more. And then potential clients started to find my page and reach out to me, which was just the best feeling ever because up until that point, I was always, you know, pitching my services, sending proposals on Upwork, which if you're there, you know that it takes some effort, it takes some time until you find a really good project. And if you're shy, you don't want to show up on stories or make reels, I get it and I don't think you have to. I just think you need to use these platforms to showcase your work, share some behind the scenes content, like how did you get to this final result? How did this idea come to life? Stuff like that and just engage with your audience. And the third thing that you really need is to keep up with the trends and keep learning new tools, new techniques, take short courses, watch YouTube videos. There is so much good content out there and so much free content as well that, that's really good. So just practice whenever you can and learn from feedback. This industry is ever changing, ever evolving. Now with AI tools, more than ever, we have to bring something special to the table and have something that 
makes us stand out and that's usually going to be your design style or the way you offer your services you know the way you run your business because at the end of the day being a freelancer you know you you are a business the design market is saturated with bad and cheap designers great designers are actually really hard to find and now i want to mention three things that you don't need when you're starting out and the first one is a niche. You're gonna hear from a lot of people that you have to niche down, like that's a must. And I don't think that's true. I know that when I started, I didn't know who my target audience was and I just wanted to explore and experiment. And I recommend you do the same if you don't have an idea of who you want to reach. I do think you have to niche down your services though, because graphic design is a pretty broad term and there's so much you can do under that umbrella. So for example, I started with branding, web design and social media design and I don't offer social media design anymore. So now I'm just focused on brand and web design. Another thing you don't need is to learn every single design software there is. Based on what you're offering, decide what to focus on. So for example, if you're offering web design services, you will want to learn Figma and Adobe XD before you learn Photoshop. And the third thing you don't need is a formal education in design. And a lot of people ask me that and I think a lot of designers will not agree with my opinion, but I think design is something you can go to college for and not really learn anything. So a degree doesn't guarantee that you will be good at it. I graduated in multimedia arts and there we touched on a lot of things like from video to animation, to brand and web design and I cannot say that I know how to animate anything and if you've seen any of my videos you know that my video editing skills are close to zero. I do think college was valuable in different ways but I don't think it impacted my career as a freelance brand and web designer because I was already what I consider successful by the time I finished university. And there you have it, three things that a new freelance designer needs and three things that they don't. Please don't let imposter syndrome or the belief that you need fancy tools or a large budget hold you back. Just get started, you will figure things out along the way. I know I did, I know that that's what happens to 99% of freelancers out there. We are all just winging it. I wish you the best of luck. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more freelancing and graphic design advice and tips. And I will see you next week.